Hey, welcome everybody to today's call. We're going to be talking about a topic that's really, really important and very much in line with um, October, which is on the large scale known as the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. If you follow me for a while, you know I am not a big fan of that whole concept because awareness to me is just like going like, oh, I'm aware there's breast cancer. <laughs> the question is, what the heck are you going to do about it, right? How can we prevent it? Um, next step will be how can we, what can we do in order to um, be aware of some early detection methods? And, um, and so for that reason, um, you know, my team and I create, have been creating a lot of content in October around breast. Um, I just basically really want to focus on breast health. And it doesn't have to be cancer because let's not wait for it. Uh, let's not hide behind, you know, the stereotypes of my mom had it and I'm going to have it kind of thing or, or um, that um, causes of breast cancer are unknown. There's a lot of there's a lot more you can do for yourself. And I have a I have a suspicion that you've been following my work. You kind of you on board with this already. So you know, so you um, you probably saw from our posts in the past. So if you're on my mailing list in October, we've been doing quite a number of different things. We've started talking about estrogen dominance in the first place, encouraging you to watch my estrogen reset program to understand how estrogen actually causes a lot of the breast issues, including lumps, fibrocystic breast, and can lead to breast cancer. Um, we've also been talking about substitutes for coffee. I'm actually drinking one of them right now, Rasa coffee. I'm gonna be talking to the founder on Friday, a really wonderful substitute for uh, coffee. And I am a big proponent of switching off from coffee, especially when you're suffering from a lot of breast issues. So let's talk about another topic, which I think is really um, important. And that is, you know, is the early detection part, right? Um, and, you know, I've invited a person here who really knows so much more about this topic uh, than me, partly because she herself has gone through um, experiencing breast cancer twice in her life. Um, she's a doctor, Dr. Veronique is right here with us. Dr. V, she also goes by Dr. V. Hi there. Hi. Uh, so good to always to, to connect with you. I always find your work so inspiring. In case you're not familiar with Dr. V's work, she is an author of, of a wonderful book. She's the founder of the Breast Conqueror, breastcancerconqueror.com. That's her website. I'll, I'll put that link up in, um, on top of our Facebook comments in just a second. And, um, you know, and I, I feel like it's a different, it's a different approach when you working with someone who has gone through that experience versus somebody who, um, like a man doctor who just has worked with a lot of women, but who hasn't really understood what it feels like to really go through this yourself. And one of the things that I love about her approach, you know, is that I, I tend to be a little bit more in like the sort of a food and supplement part and, you know, detoxification, that's, that's my whole gig. But um, what I really love about Dr. V, and I remember picking up your first book, was how much attention you put into the whole system you've designed. Well, is it called the seven elements, correct? Seven essentials, uh-huh. Seven essentials. And, you know, and, and focusing also on things like your mental health and the trauma that a person has gone through and loving yourself and, and how lack of that can also be a causation for a contributing factor to breast cancer. So anyway, um, we're not going to be... You know, one more thing I just want to say before we dive into the interview, because we really, we're going to be focusing on early detection and how to find breast lumps and, um, and, and how to use this really great device that we're going to be showing you. But, you know, I will say, uh, I think for any woman who's ever found a breast lump on her breast, you know how incredibly scary that is. I mean, first is the first thought is, what is going on? What is it, right? And then you schedule an appointment and is the wait time for the appointment. But even before you schedule the appointment, then you have this whole you know, thinking process of what do I do? I'm being pushed towards the mammogram. And then my other hippie friends are saying thermogram is the way to go. And then I've been kind of hearing and seeing these Facebook thing about digital mammograms, you know, and then other people just tell me breathe and meditate and go to an ashram in India. It's like, what do I do, right? And, and I have to say, this is, you know, having experienced it myself, it's, it is one of the most scary moments in your life. And, and that's really what um, I've been really wanting to debunk a lot of these, highlight some of the things that you can do if you have found to have a breast lump. Um, and that's one of the uh, purposes of today's presentation is to, Dr. V has got some slides we're gonna be sharing 
um, also on the different diagnostic tools and the pros and cons, um, all of the, you know, of, of the different options that are out there. So you, you feel more educated, empowered, and don't feel pushed and threatened. And so you don't, you don't act from a place of fear, but from a place of empowerment education. So can I just tell you how much I love your work? Have I, have I not said that yet? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Magdalena. That means a lot coming from you. So I, I really appreciate that. I'm, as, as you know, I'm very passionate about what I do because of my personal experience. And there's so many women out there that are um, just so afraid about the possibility of breast cancer, even when they're diagnosed, you know, they're, they just go into this deer in headlights mode and and you know I'm here to let women know that they don't have to fear breast cancer because once you understand what it is and what it's not then you can really deal with it appropriately. So can we just before we dive into the slides because I feel like you're just going to cover a section of what you do can we just talk a little bit more about your story just like you know just like a five seven minute thing and and what I also want to ask you is why did you have a recurrence of your cancer? Very good question. So my background is, uh, you know, I'm a chiropractor, a bioenergetic chiropractor, and, and I did a lot of work uh, and research in naturopathy and homeopathy, bioenergetic testing. And, uh, you know, my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer early in my career. And that was a big light bulb moment for me because I realized that so many people did not understand, you know, how to, how to deal with cancer. And the doctor sent him home and gave him no hope. Fast forward 25 years, uh, I'm in the shower and I'm doing an exam in the shower, which is not the right way to do it, by the way, <laughs> but I found a lump in my left breast. And that was the, you know, the turning point in my life, you know, professionally and personally, where I experienced breast cancer myself. So I went through a healing journey in 2004 through 2006, and, you know, everything was successful after a few years. Fast forward, um, Back in 2015, so you know, nine years later, I was known as the breast cancer conqueror. I was, you know, my team and I coached women in 44 countries, and uh, you know, I, same thing. Yeah, you know, I was in the shower, bam, found that lump again, and but this time, you know, I, I my gut told me I already had kind of a clue that I wasn't well just by the way I was feeling. I was, you know, a woman on a mission. I was burning the candle at both ends. I wasn't taking care of myself. I neglected my own health and, uh, you know, I created the perfect storm for breast cancer to show up again. So I had to really go back to basics, set boundaries, learn to say no, you know, reorganize my business. So I wasn't doing as much work as I was, you know, back then. And so three years later, uh, with a lot of, you know, focused energy and work, I'm, you know, vibrantly healthy and happier than I've ever been. So uh, I learned a lot in those, in those three years. So you think you have a because you were not taking care of yourself? Part of it was that, yes. Um, and I know that I had, I discovered I had um, a, an autoimmune issue on tooth number 14, which sat, sits on the left breast. It's called root resorption. It's kind of a rare uh, thing, but basically autoimmune issue on that left breast had a big impact. I also discovered I had more uh, cavitations. I thought they were taken care of, but you know, new ones popped up or you know, they weren't discovered the first time, you know, nine years ago, technology has changed a lot. Um, my hormones, so I had to really balance my hormones, my thyroid, my female hormones. I had to get my sleep um, dialed down because I wasn't sleeping as well. And I just had to you know, do a lot more emotional healing. So I just you know, went through the seven essentials again, but just um, learned a lot through each of those. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, isn't that like the, the typical symptom of the, of the, the, the shoeless shoemaker, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> Take care of everybody else, but you know, I learned that uh, you can't keep giving from an empty bucket. You have to replenish the bucket and I wasn't doing that properly. Can I ask you, what kind of cancer did you have the first and the second time? Well, I never had a biopsy, so I don't have a label for it. Uh, I did have some blood work and some scans to show that you know there was cancer there, but uh, I, don't, I didn't have a name for it, so. Okay. Okay, that's that's a great approach too. Yeah, I mean, to me, cancer was cancer. So whatever it was, you don't I had have, to- You don't have the BRCA genes, correct? Sorry? You don't have the BRCA1, BRCA2 genes, right? No. Yeah. No. Okay, okay. No. So, hey, you guys. So in case you're joining in late, I'm talking to Dr. Veronique de la Sierre, who also goes by Dr. V. And the reason I have yellow teeth is because I'm drinking a coffee alternative. I'm looking at myself going, I look yellow. <laughs> 
<laughs> they don't look yellow. No, they look fine. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, and uh, we are talking here today about early detection, but also diagnostic uh, methods of, you know, when you do find a lump, what, when, what do you do? So I know you've prepared some slides for us today, and I've asked you also to add a few more methods because we get a lot of questions about that. Um, so yeah, why don't we get started with, with the presentation? Okay. Let me, there we go. See my slides? Awesome, looks great, yep. Okay, so welcome to My Breast Friend. So as Magdalena mentioned, I'm Dr. V two-time breast cancer conqueror and what you're looking at here is a thermogram and this is all the blood flow feeding a tumor in my left breast this was me back in 2006 and that's after I'd been in practice for 25 years and you know I was the wellness warrior back then and I you know I, I couldn't believe that I was facing a breast cancer healing journey you know I was doing everything right so I thought right breastfed my kids exercise, chiropractic care, colonics, I mean, you name it, I was doing it. So I had to really go back to basics and ask myself, you know, what has allowed the cancer to develop? And as I was going through that journey, I recognized that there were times when I was frustrated and I was confused and overwhelmed. And obviously, occasionally there was that little fear, that little voice that crept in sometimes. So if I was feeling that way, how much more so would the average person be that didn't have the, you know, the research background and, and the professional years that I had after being in practice? So I said, you know, there's got to be an easy system, something that I can create so women can just follow it step by step to make it easier for them. So that's why I created the seven essential system. It's a step by step guide that if you follow, you never have to fear cancer or any dis-ease again. So just briefly, essential number one is let food be your medicine. Number two is reduce your toxic exposure. Number three is balancing your energy, which includes your electrical energy, uh, your sleep, your hormones, um, you know, making sure that everything is, is, is balanced properly. Your um, emotions, number four is heal your emotional wounds. We know that there's a direct connection with our emotional health and our physical health and how it affects our immune system. Biological dentistry, what's going on in your mouth because that can affect your health. All the therapeutic plants and herbs that have been shown to weaken cancer cells and boost the immune system. And then lastly, early detection. Out, these are all tests that are used outside of traditional medicine, at all different kinds of blood tests and different tools that are at your disposal. So after sharing my healing journey, I decided to write a book. This is the second edition of my book. And it was a number one bestseller in 10 categories and in five countries. And here you see this beautiful woman, Olivia Newton-John, who has supported my work. She was a client for, for a while, and she also attended a couple of our retreats. So she's just a lovely, beautiful woman. And then that led to speaking engagements, just came back from Truth About Cancer uh, 2019. Um, and then from there, we decided to create live events so that women didn't Feel like they had to go through their journey by themselves. A lot of them feel like the Lone Ranger because their family, their friends may not understand that they want to add, you know, evidence-based natural medicine to their journey. So fast forward 2015 and something familiar happened. You, you can see the, from the slide that it looks very similar to what 2006 looked like. So I created the perfect storm for breast cancer to show up again. And you know, obviously that was very tough for me because I was known as the breast cancer conqueror that I, you know, I had to um, really draw some boundaries and go back to basics and really dig a little bit deeper to see what had allowed the cancer to develop. And happy to say that uh, as of 2018, I'm happier and healthier than I've ever been. But the interesting thing is that both times I discovered the lump. You know, my mother had breast cancer and because of that, I was just more aware of doing breast exams, but I really didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I was just kind of guessing. So I'm gonna teach you proper methods of um, learning how to do a breast exam. When we think about breast cancer in general, every two minutes a woman is diagnosed and there's over two million worldwide that will be diagnosed. And in the US alone, over 330,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Wow. Now, according to the American Cancer Society, the most common symptom of breast cancer is a new lump or a mass and women, 
basically find the lumps more often than their doctor does. Women over 50 will find it 50% of the time. Women under 50 will find it 71% of the time. So what are your options when it comes to lump detection? Well, there's a proper and consistent breast self-exam, which I'm going to talk about and teach you. Mammography, 3D mammography, MRIs, thermography, and ultrasound. So those are the main ones that we're going to look at today. So when we look at mammograms, there was a 25-year Canadian study with 90,000 women, and the conclusion was that annual mammography did not reduce breast cancer mortality rate at all beyond that of a physical exam. So they were basically equal in finding a lump. Now, this study was done on hundreds of women. It was a 23-year study, and this was the conclusion. Mammograms found it 43% of the time. Breast exam and, and accidental detection found it 43% of the time. And then when you add clinical exam, you know, touch, that's 56% of the time. So touch was actually more effective in finding a lump than an actual machine. And when you think of mammography, and I'm not telling you not to have a mammogram, I'm just giving you information about mammography so you can make an informed decision. And I know that you know mammograms have found lumps in women. I know that they often miss them as well. But when you look at some of the factors with mammography, we know there's radiation. You know, Low dose ionizing radiation can increase your risk of breast cancer, according to these studies done in the British, British Journal of Radiology. Now, this used to be on the American Cancer Society's website, no longer there. But by the time breast cancer is detected on a mammogram, the disease will have been there for an average of six to eight years. Now, wouldn't you want those six to eight years to be able to work on you know, healing and reversing what, uh, what allowed that cancer to develop? And if you've ever had a mammogram or if you've talked to women who've had mammograms, they're often very painful. You know, what if there's a small little tumor in there and that compression and that radiation can rupture the tumors and the blood vessels and spread malignant cells throughout the body? So there's, you know, definitely some issues that you have to think about. And then dense breasts. This is the strongest predictor of the failure of mammography. You know, over 50% of women now have dense breasts. And what about younger women, right? Younger women from the age of 20 to 40 they're not getting mammograms uh, based on the new guidelines you know that um, the american cancer society put out so you know there's there's some issues with mammography <clears throat> so they took it to the next to a next step and they said well let's do a 3d breast tomosynthesis so they can get a 3d image of the breast and so basically you're not just getting one or two images but you're getting multiple x-rays to create that three-dimensional view of the breast and so the tube actually moves in an arc over the breast and it takes pictures of the breast in different angles and really the 3d mammography has not changed to things statistically as far as we know right up to this point is that what the, is the 3d mammogram the same as a digital mammogram uh, no, the digital mammogram would be a different kind of x-ray radiation uh, with less radiation and they use different uh, screens to capture. Um, so it's, it's different. Okay. Are we going to talk about digital mammogram later? Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't think to prepare that. Okay. Okay. Since we're on it, because um, we do get a lot of questions about digital mammograms because that's supposed to be like the latest thing now. Okay. Um, I see your point of view on mammograms. Is doing a digital mammogram having a less radiation possibility? Um, yes, possibly. And um, you know the the idea of you know the digital is to yeah expose the breast to less radiation. Uh, whether or not it gives a better picture or not is just um, you know I don't know. I haven't I haven't done the research on that, but I, I will definitely. Take a look at that for sure. Okay. All right, now the next tool would be the MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. And this is what it looks like when you get an MRI of the breast tissue. Basically they use radio waves and strong magnets to create that image. 
it uh, can look for other tumors in the breast and, and it accurately detects the size. Now, the, the downsize of the magnetic resonance imaging, the MRIs, is that it uses a very toxic dye called gadolinium, and a lot of women have reactions, and it stays in the body for a very long time. Um, <clears throat> there's you know, there's um, a movement. Some women are trying to get um, MRIs as part of uh, the general screening tool uh, because they're saying that mammograms miss it so much, especially if you have brand, um, dense tissue. Um, so that's another option for you. Then there's thermographic imaging. Now, the beauty of thermography is that it's non-invasive. There's no pain, no compression, no radiation. And, and like any other tool, uh, it's not going to diagnose breast cancer. It's just going to give an image and to alert you of any type of physiological changes going on. Um, you know, thermography basically works by picking up the infrared heat that's being emitted from the body. It's translated through the software program to create an image. And the premise is the more uh, heat, the more inflammation, then it's going to show up red. Now, this is what a, um, a nice symmetry looks like in breast tissue. Blue and green are nice and cool, and you want them to look the same on both sides. But here you can see, obviously, a lot of redness, right? That's suspicious vascular activity because cancer cells are very smart. They're going to create their own blood flow so they can get nourishment. That's called angiogenesis or neovascularity. Um, and so that's going to be picked up because there's going to be more heat and though it's going to show up as red hot. Inflammatory breast cancer, not picked up by a mammogram, but it shows up beautifully uh, with um, uh, thermography. And then what about men, right? Men don't get mammograms and over 400 men die of breast cancer every year. So, and, and that number is growing. And here we see a typical pattern, uh, like you saw in mine, the blood flow feeding the tumor, and that's the tumor there in the center. So um, why are there, you know, why are there, I mean, given like what you're talking about makes perfect sense, right? A blood supply creating heat in the breast, that's, that's a cause for a concern. Why is there criticism that thermo thermography is inaccurate and unreliable? Well, that's, because they're, you know, they don't, they're not looking at the big picture. Um, they're, you know, not, no tool is 100% effective, right? Uh, which is why we always say, and I recommend, don't use just one tool. Nothing is a standalone tool. Always back it up with something else. So if you do a mammogram, get an ultrasound or a thermogram. Or if you do a thermogram, get a mammogram or an ultrasound. You know, always back it up because mammograms miss tumors all the time. Thermography is 97% accurate. Now, if the mm. tumor is encased, and if there's not a lot of neovascularity and not, not a lot of blood flow and it's slow growing, then it may not pick it up. But yeah. most of the time, if there's a palpable tumor, you're going to see a visible change in the temperature. And, you know, and the other thing I, I will, because, you know, obviously I, I kind of float around in both the worlds and, and, and you have, you have conventional um, oncologists will, will say, or radiologists will say that the exposure these days from mammogram is equivalent to you taking a flight from San Francisco to New York, right? And it's like, and you know, so that's how they justify it. that's the amount of radiation that we get. So how true is that? And or is that that when we do travel, we do get that kind of exposure? Yes, when we travel, when we're in that little tin plane, you know, above the, the atmosphere, yes, we are getting some, some form of radiation. However, we're not getting a concentrated form of radiation to one part of our body. And it's not just, um, you know, one time, but it's repeated. You know, women sometimes are told to come every three months or they take multiple pictures and it's chronic, chronic exposure. We know radiation causes cancer. So if you're exposing your breast tissue, or any part of your body to chronic radiation, that's going to increase your risk factor. You know, we know the statistics on that. Yeah, and yeah, and, and you know, and the other thing I really don't like about mammograms is just the whole institution behind it and how they make you feel like if you don't come in tomorrow to get it done, 
the risk is so high and you're gonna you're gonna pay for it and there are consequences to that and that the whole fear mechanism behind it i remember when when i found mine uh probably like seven years five seven years ago five years ago yeah uh very scary moment and um and and you know i was living in marin county at that time and so i had to go down to san francisco and these nurses were literally stalking me you know like once they had my cell phone it was like i was getting i probably got like three threatening calls and and i thought to myself you know if i wasn't as hard-headed on the pinnated and plugged into this industry if i was just like you know a average person i'll be i'll be scared shitless right. and i'll be just like checking it dry down to san francisco getting the the, the mammogram like pronto right? right so it's really it's it, and that was the part that was very um off-putting for me and that was part of the reason that was a big part of me that was feeling very um you know combatful combative against a system like that that scares you that way <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a lot of pressure on women, especially if they don't really understand, you know, the, the big picture of things. And, you know, I know you mentioned initially about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. You know, I, I've renamed a BAM, Breast Health Awareness Month, you know, much like you. And, you know, this is a time of year where they're just basically trolling for business. And, mm. you know, if you look at organizations, you know, the big pink one, for example, the billions of dollars that they receive, 2% goes towards research for breast cancer prevention, 2%. Yeah. You know, 56% or, or 73%, I forget, forget the exact number, is on better treatment options and better tools. So we know what's funding that pink movement, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, yes. It's, yeah, it's, let's not even go there because that yeah. pisses me off so big time, including the brands that are putting pink ribbons on. It's getting better now because of the criticism they got. But just a few years ago, they got degraded as a nonprofit because of the companies that were supporting them were containing this, the very same chemicals that are very well established to be causing breast cancer. So yeah, it makes me really angry. Let's move yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that could be a whole, a whole other program. Mm -hmm. All right, so another tool that we have at our disposal is ultrasound. And the beauty of ultrasound, there's absolutely no pain involved. It only takes a few minutes. It uses high frequency sound waves and it converts it to an image. There's you know, no radiation. Uh, it's often used to complement mammography, unfortunately, with traditional insurance. If you have to have a mammogram in order to get an ultrasound, they won't just do ultrasound standalone. But that's changing because a lot of thermography clinics now are starting to offer ultrasound. Some doctors are offering ultrasound as a standalone, which is great. Now, if you have a solid cyst, it can typically be cancer or fibroadenoma. If it's fluid filled, it's typically benign. So that's that's the good news. And again, you know, when it comes to young women, uh, it's you know their tissue is so thick because there's a lot of glandular tissue. And one doctor described it as it's like finding a polar bear in a snowstorm. You know, it's very difficult to see anything on a mammogram and even in an ultrasound. So all these tools and all these um, techniques that we've talked about are basically things that the doctor will do. You know, your doctor, you may go in for your yearly um, checkup, you know, once a year, your doctor is going to feel your breasts and recommend you know, the mammography and ultrasound. Um, but the problem is, is that we've relied on external sources to detect a lump, right? We've given away our power to other people and other machines. And my big uh, mission is to wake women up and let them know, you know, it's your body. Let's take responsibility for your body and get to know it. Because even if you do your yearly screening, there's still 364 days of the year where your breast tissue can change. And I've seen that repeatedly. Women go in for a mammogram. They say there's nothing, but the woman says, hey, I feel this lump. They say it's fine. Go home, come back in three months, six months. And by then, you know, the disease is spread and it's, they've actually given it a term called interval cancers. This is the kind of cancer that's found between screenings mm. and they tend to be more aggressive because, you know, they're fast growing. And so, you know, be aware of that, you know, even if you're getting your yearly screenings, that's not enough. You really need to start taking responsibility for, you know, for learning what to, what to feel for in your breast tissue. But then, you know, we've never been properly trained, right? We've been given a little booklet or, you know, a thing to hang in our shower. 
you know, we've never been trained on exactly what to find. And it's, you know, it's like telling somebody, well, learn how to play a piano just by reading a piano book or the, the music. You can't, <laughs> you have to learn to create that, um, you know, that neurological link between a sound and the tips of your fingers. And so we're, you know, we're going to teach you what to feel for and, and you know, what to look for. And, you know, is there a method that trains your fingers what to feel for? And yes, there is. So this all started back at the University of Florida in Gainesville with the support of the National Cancer Institute and the National Science Foundation and many scientists worldwide. And there was a method called the Mamacare method that was developed. So it was a silicone breast model that was used to train doctors around the world on how to find a suspicious lump in a woman's breast. It's, um, you know, it's been the gold standard basically for performing and teaching clinical and now personal breast exams. Mm -hmm. So while the Mamacare method is the recognized gold standard for doctors, it's never been directly marketed to you, the consumer. So good news, all, about, all that's about to change. So welcome to my breast friend. So my breast friend is based on the Mamacare method using the same technology and same material that doctors have used to train their fingers to find a lump. And this training kit has been made Handmade in the U.S. with love. So you've got one there. Yeah, I can yeah, show it I, to you. Yeah. yeah, I do. Um, I think that's, um, yeah. So I have to tell you, you know, when I first received it and that, I was just like, I closed my eyes and I was just like, okay, feel. And it was amazing. Like I could not find some of them because I was just like, eh, you know, right. Eh. right. <laughs> Okay, right? Uh, right, like poke, 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 which, you know, that, that's what I thought. And then I see them and I'm like, then I go like really deep in with my finger. And I'm thinking if this was my breast, that would be incredibly painful, if not, you know, unhealthy. Right. Um, so, so I know you, there is, what's cool about this is that it comes with a booklet. And, and I know you also have an online uh, videos, instructional videos that come with this, right? With the whole package. Mm -hmm. It shows mm -hmm. women how to do this. Yeah, so the little booklet will give you the basics, but you must watch the 20 minute video because that shows you the proper positioning. So there's there's three different aspects for a proper breast self exam. So number one, your fingers have to be taught what to feel for. So when you feel the model, so these are actual uh, replicas of lumps that were removed from women's breasts. So these were, you know, cancer breast cancer lumps. So these are exact replicas, different sizes and different positions in the model. You can see this red one is very, very deep. So when you know what normal breast tissue feels like versus a suspicious lump, then when you feel that you go, oh, that's not normal. I, I need to call my doctor because I'm feeling something different. The second aspect is you have to know where to feel. So most women are just gonna poke around their breast tissue, but you have to follow the whole terrain with the grid method, collarbone, chest bone, underneath the breast, side of the breast, underneath the nipple, into the, excuse me, into the armpit. So you have to come into contact with all of the breast tissue. And then the third thing is how to feel. Oops, sorry. How to feel, you know, most people will go in there with the tips of their fingers. You have to use the pads of your fingers. The pads of your fingers have hundreds of nerve endings per centimeter, square centimeter. And you use the pads like you see in the picture there and you have to apply light, medium and deep all the way to the chest wall because sometimes like you see in that red one, the, the tumors will hide all the way down there deep. And it's very important to get to know that method. And that's what the training video teaches you. It teaches you the grid method and the light, medium, and deep. Move down one finger, light, medium, and deep. And you follow that method and there's, there's no way that you can miss any breast tissue. You know, and, and women say, well, there's so many lumps in my breast, I don't know what I'm feeling. And, and that's the beauty of this model is that there's normal breast nodular tissue in there. So you can see what nodular feel, uh, tissue feels like versus your own. 
And so like you see here, one side is very smooth, so there's nothing there. The other side has the nodular tissue, so you can feel the difference. And then you get to practice it on your, on your own breast tissue. So you get to see, okay, this is normal. And every time you do it, every month that you do it, then when you follow the same pattern, but you find something abnormal, then you can go, okay, that's not, that wasn't there last month. And when it comes to detecting a lump, size really matters. Now, I was shocked when I discovered this. The average size lump found by women untrained in a proper breast self-exam is typically the size of a ping pong ball. I mean, that's huge. And then as they get better and better, and then once, once they learn how to do the proper method with the Mamacare method, then they can find something as small as a pea. Now, does size really matter when it comes to outcome of breast cancer? Absolutely. When the cancer is small and it's less than a centimeter, the patient's 15-year survival rate exceeds 88%. I mean, that's wow. huge, right? Yeah. So size really matters. And that's why it's so important to get into the habit of touching your breasts every month. So I want to ask you, so why is this... Um, why is the whole shower thing like you were talking about is so inaccurate and kind of like now you, you it sounds like it's a bit of a joke now when you, when right. you talk about it. Well, because when you when you do the proper exam, you have to be laying down and you have to have your, you know, your your hand up at a certain angle. And at one point you put a pillow behind you so that your breast tissue can fall to the side. And so you can get under the nipple and then you get flat on your back and do it the other way. And so that way you're feeling all of the breast tissue, because otherwise it just especially if you have big breasts, it's just going to kind of plop there. And so that gives you the advantage of being able to really feel areas with the breast tissue laying to the side. What about women who have super dense breasts or like are so fibrocystic that just can't even, you know, touching is just ex excruciating? Yeah, that's a good point. So fibrocystic or dense, it doesn't matter. Get to know what your normal geography is. And when you detect something that's different, that's when you're, you know, your light bulb goes off and you say, aha. Mm -hmm. And whether you've had a mastectomy or a lumpectomy, very important to do the, the breast exam because uh, tumors will show up at the line of a, you know, incision oftentimes or in the armpit. So whether you've had, whether you don't have a breast or not, make sure that you continue to do your exam. And, and really the good news is eight out of 10 lumps are not cancerous. Um, but if you find something and your gut is telling you this doesn't feel right, but your doctor poo-poos it and says, oh, you're fine, come back in six months or a year, but you just feel it's not right, then get a second opinion or press him or her to get more testing done. So what does a breast lump feel like? Well, according to breastcancer.org, so they said most likely to be cancerous if, now they said does not cause pain, but I added it may because a lot of women uh, have pain associated with breast cancer. I know I did. Um, so they said it wouldn't cause pain, but you know I, I tend to not agree with that. But it's often very hard. It's unevenly shaped and it's immobile. It doesn't move under the skin. A fibrocystic or benign cyst is gonna be movable, whereas a cancerous one will not be. Um, and then you have to look at other signs. And so when you get out of the shower every day, just look in the mirror and look for skin changes. You know, is there redness or is there pitting of the skin? So it starts looking like an orange skin or is there a lot of difference between one breast or the other? Like you're going to have one breast that may be slightly larger or smaller, but if you notice a big difference, then that's a, you know, an alarm signal that needs to go off. Uh, changes in appearance of your nipple. Is it, you know, everted or inverted? And it's not usually like that or peeling or flaking of the skin. Um, general pain in your breast, itchy breasts, swollen lymph nodes in your armpit. So, you know, it takes two seconds to do that, you know, that visual, um, sneak peek, you know, when you look, take, take a look at your breasts. And this is just, you know, another reminder, get in front of the mirror. I know they have, you know, she's touching things, but um, you know, it's, you're not going to get as good of a, of an effect if you're just standing up, but do that visual inspection. And the other thing too, is, is to keep a log, you know, I always keep a journal 
because it's a reminder, put it in your to-do uh, calendar. For premenopausal women, do it after your period because that's when the hormonals are going to be at their lowest and there's going to be fewer effects on the breast tissue. Menopausal women, do it the first week of every month. Just put it in your calendar. And once you get good at it, it takes probably about 15 minutes, if that, you know, you, and it's a, it's a time of reflection and you're just, you know, taking some quiet time to feel your body and to ensure that you're continuing to be vibrantly healthy. And so the good news is you now have very early detection at your fingertips. You don't have to just rely on external methods or on another person. So because we're offering this webinar and this introduction to, to your audience, Magdalena, I wanted to offer something special. Mm -hmm. So the standard package includes you know, the breast model, the booklet, the training, video training, and access to a private Facebook group, which we, you know, we talk about people have questions all the time and, you know, we're in there. I mean, that itself, I have to say, and, and the private Facebook group, like, do you spend any time there? Do you ever go there? Yeah, 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 we, yeah, yeah mean, definitely. I, I will say that, you know, this whole thing, you will see that in a second, that it's so inexpensive for what it is. If you have a question for somebody you want to trust, like a naturopath or a functional doc, right? It's going to cost you 500 bucks and above for an appointment just to go and ask questions because you ain't going to be posting it on Facebook hoping your doc is going to jump on and answer your question. And so, um, you know, I feel like what, what you're offering here for us, I feel like even just the access to the private Facebook group where you can ask questions is just priceless. It's so important. And, and, you know, women don't feel so alone, you know, because yeah. starting to feel your breast tissue, if you've never done it, is kind of a scary thing, right? Because you really, you know, not sure what kind of waters you're treading, but we've got some really great bonuses for you. So I created an online course called Your Complete Guide to Preventing Breast Cancer Naturally. And it's based on the seven essential systems. So it's all about food, specific supplements, detoxification, dental, emotional, all those things that you need to be able to prevent breast cancer naturally. Uh, it's an online course. There's resources you can download so you don't have to go looking all over the internet for the specific supplements and things that work. So on our website, that's 147. I'm giving it away for free. Uh, to Magdalena's uh, audience. And the second bonus is that you're getting free shipping. Now, if you live in other countries, that can be as much as $30. So free shipping is, is a big deal. But this is free shipping in the US, right? It's, it's everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, wow. Okay. Everywhere. Yeah. Cool. Because if, you, if you're living in Australia and you listen to this, that can cost up to $30 to ship. Right ship the model. So this is what you're getting. You're getting the My Breast Friend model, which normally retails at 127. It comes with the booklet and the video. You're getting the online course, 147, free shipping, which can be anywhere from 20 or 10 to $30. Total value of 284, you're only paying 127. So you're saving $157 or more if the shipping is, is $10. Yeah. Now, um, I don't, I don't know if you can put in the chat box, you know, the link for them. To I have, yeah. Hey, you guys. So I've already put the link in so you can, it's going to take you to this page here. Okay. So there's the webinar special. Uh, so this is what we found, you know, women are all about community and they often, you know, want to order more than one, you know, one for their friend, one for their sister. Uh, we found the most popular pack here is the generation pack where it's, you know, mother, uh, grandmother, you know, daughter or, you know, sisters. There's also community packs where women say, hey, I want all my friends to be able to, you know, do this and we can do all the training together. But each of these people, for every um, model that you get, everybody gets their own login and access, their private login and access to the video. So you can see how much you're saving. You're saving, you know, over $500 with the, the generation pack. And of course, if you're not satisfied for any reason, tell us within two weeks of receiving the order, uh, send it back to us and we'll refund your money, no questions asked. So after all is said and done, does the Mamacare method work? Well, there's been a lot of studies done on it. And basically this one shows that long-term improved lump detection and examination technique definitely was improved as a result of the Mamacare method. 
And then, of course, you know, the results obtained uh, with a lot of data suggest that performing a breast self-exam actually reduces the risk of death from breast cancer. So it goes back to size, right? The sooner you find it, the, the better the chances of survival. And as I said at the beginning, you know, it's really time to get over it, ladies. You know, it's time to step up to the plate, take responsibility for your health. Ignorance is not bliss anymore. You know, <laughs> we have so many tools available to us that we have to take responsibility. You know, we we hear that all the time. I don't know why, what I'm feeling, so I freak out, or my breasts are lumpy and I'm scared to touch them. Well, there's no excuse anymore because uh, we're getting amazing feedback from women who have used it. Um, and are seeing some great benefits. Here's Barbara saying it's the best tool that helped her to see the geography and changes in her breast. Here Tante says, you know, it's not a quick fix. It takes practice like anything else, like learning to play an instrument. You have to, you know, create that neurological connection with the pads of your fingers. And then I love this one here. Her mom died of breast cancer when she was 55. And so she ordered one for her sister because she did not want you know, she didn't want to go through what they saw her mom go through. And we've also, you know, talked to educators and saying, you know, young women in school need to learn about this uh, tool as well. So just to recap, um, you know, you're, you can see what you're saving here with one model, you're saving 147 plus shipping. And then the price, you know, the savings go up as you order the various uh, packs. So Magdalena yeah. has the link there for you to order. Yeah, and um, yeah, and thank you for throwing in the free access to your group and the um, the also the webinar, uh, not the webinar, but your your full program on the detection. Uh, sorry, of the um, prevention of breast cancer naturally. Um, that's that's really awesome. I mean, you say that the value of your program is one forty seven. I don't know, Veronique. I I think it's like. <laughs> three thousand dollars yeah i know because you know, how much would you pay <laughs> I'd, love to to, I'd love to do that yeah i mean how much would you want to pay to you know and that's the whole thing right like people who have cancer you know then when they go down to clinics in mexico or whatever they spend you know i mean the entry point is like 10 grand and it only goes up higher from there right and you know and here's the thing that kills me it's that prevention is such an unsexy and unattractive message like whenever we talk about prevention even now with our community it kind of lands flat Right. You know, but it's always like when the shit hits the fan, that's when you start doing anything you can um, to crawl out of that hole. And, you know, I just can't focus the attention. And, and you know, and, and I have to say, it's like it takes some discipline and I think emotional intelligence to do that. And I think a lot of women, we, we do that and some women don't. Um, you know, I will, I will share with you, I don't know if, if I ever told you this, uh, Jill Carn Dr. Jill Carnahan is my doctor here in Colorado. When I went to see her two and a half years ago, and I, you know, I brought a whole bunch of printouts with me and she had on a table, so she's like flipping through it and we were chatting and she says, uh, she asked me, have you had breast cancer? And I'm like, no, why? And she says, you know, you do realize you have all the genetic predispositions for for having one. And fair enough, in my family on both, both sides, my dad, mom and dad, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, I'm a notoriously bad estrogen detoxifier, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's the story that I can tell myself, but it's also, that's part of, the, I think, the reason why I do what I do. And I'm so passionate about educating about estrogen dominance, about toxicity, reduction of detox, toxicity, hormonal balance, right? Because all of that plays into it. And, you know, and I'm doing in my life, I'm doing everything I can never to be like my aunt or never to be like, yeah, it's basically my aunt on both my mom's and dad's side, you know, because it's one of the most scary is the scariest thing that and you I know you had gone through it before, um, you know, and, um, and so that's why we're here talking about this whole prevention thing, not a terribly sexy topic. Um, but hey, this is it's a life saving topic. It really is. And so the uh, I did you want to say, say something? Because I have a bunch of questions that are coming in, and um, unless you want to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say real quickly, you know, when it comes to prevention, it's not that difficult. I mean, something as simple as making sure that your vitamin D levels are optimum can reduce right. your breast cancer risk by 83%. Just that. So, you know, it's those little tricks of the trade that you can learn that can really, you know, keep you from ever having to experience what, what I did. Um. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got a whole bunch of questions. And hey, you guys, by the way, when we're doing Facebook Live, 
in a life mode, the question that I see is like four or five at a time. So, and then they vanish. And so I, it's not like we're ignoring your questions. It's just that I might not be, I might have missed some of them. So I will just address those that I have managed to save because I'm actually like copy and pasting that too on the site to make sure um, they, they don't disappear. Okay. So the first question was, um, let's say Trish is saying, what are you, well, this is okay. Trish is saying, what are your feelings about taking out implants? What am I what? What are, what's your feeling about taking out implants? So oh. I guess silicone implants. And Take them out. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's the answer for sure. Uh, I mean, and we know, you know, BII, breast implant illness is a real thing. Autoimmune disease is a real thing. I mean, it's, they're toxic. There's no way around it to have them removed, but make sure when you do that, that you have the capsule removed as well, because if the capsule stays in there, it's just a breeding ground for, you know, more problems. Yeah, and this, this whole, you know, if you want some support on that as well, there are Facebook groups uh, that if you just look at breast um, or silicon extraction, they call it um, implant, ex, explanting, explant. explanting, yeah. So yeah. There, are, there are Facebook groups, support groups, and you make sure you work with a practitioner who really specializes in that because it turns out that extraction, from what I understand, is much more difficult than just put, taking it out is so much more difficult than putting it in. Yeah. So... Okay, uh, and, and by the way, there is a number of women in our community who had extraction done. Um, and um, and they, they said it's been like night and day in, in terms of their health. Unbelievable. Um, so let's see, Candice is saying, I'm trying to find the lump that I actually found last weekend with this method, but the only way I can find it is by pinching the breast tissue. Doctor, my doctor also had a hard time to find it until I found it for her. Okay, so, well, hopefully you're getting some more testing um, on that. You know, make sure you get an ultrasound, thermogram, um, you know, if you choose to have a mammogram. But um, if you're feeling something unusual, then don't, don't delay, you know, act on it right away. Um, you know, and, and then and then there's also a simple test, blood test that you can do that's kind of outside the box of traditional medicine as a screening for breast cancer, and it's now FDA approved. It's called IV Gene, I V Y G E N E, IV Gene Labs, and they're looking at free cancer uh, DNA in the blood, and they've identified four different kinds of cancers, and breast cancer is one of them. It's a great test because it comes back. There's a green, uh, orange, and then red, and the arrow is, you know, tells you where you are. So you want to be in the green zone. It's just a, you know, simple check. You have to get your, your, you know, integrative doctor to order it for you. But um, that's a, yeah. another way to to find out. Uh, Tyler Marie is asking: Are skin tags a concern? Our skin one tags. tags. I'm assuming it's skin tags around breast or on the breast. I'm assuming, uh, Tyler. Yeah. Is that um, not necessarily. I mean, but you know, skin tags are an indication that you're not utilizing your protein very well, or you're having an excess amount of protein in your body. Okay. Rhonda is saying my gyno, um, my gyne years ago said to do it in the shower with soap. I guess it's just the old method, right? Like what, right. that's what you used to do. Right, right. Uh, Brianna is asking, how do I find a thermogra thermography place in, in my area? Okay, good, great question. If you go to thermologyonline.org, thermologyonline.org, you'll find a list of certified uh, clinics uh, all over the world. Awesome. Um, we also had a great question here. If cancer was found in a breast and the breast was removed, why do I still need chemotherapy? Well, that's a good question. So you have to realize that cancer is just the tip of the iceberg, right? It's just the mm -hmm. symptom. So if they cut out the cancer, recognize that there's still circulating tumor cells and you still have the same terrain um, that has allowed the cancer to develop. So whether you choose chemotherapy or evidence-based natural medicine, you still have to get to the root cause that allowed the cancer to grow in the first place. So you have to weaken the cancer cells and boost your immune system and change your lifestyle and, you know, follow the seven essentials. Um, PC is saying, and this is more of a comment, I think, than a question. 
I had breast cancer. I have an implant in one breast. The other, uh, sorry, the one with the cancer, the tumor was 2.5 centimeter. I'm so scared. I don't want to do a mammogram. A mammogram missed this cancer and follow up. They want me to do the, the follow up. They want me to do them again. Well, this is where you have to basically be an advocate for yourself and do your research, you know, get a thermogram, get an ultrasound done, get this IVG IV gene test done to see if you're still actively what I call cancering. Um, you know, just because they remove the tumor again doesn't mean that you're cancer free and that's a huge disservice that traditional medicine has done to women. They cut out the lump, they don't see anything in the traditional blood work or the scans and they send you away telling you you're cancer free but then you have to address the circulating tumor cells and the breast cancer stem cells because that's why so many women have recurrence. Okay. Um so there are more questions. I just can't see them, unfortunately, in this mode. And so, you know, we're going to, um, I'm going to try to, um, I think what we're going to do is send you those questions. If, they, they, you know, if they're, they're, we haven't answered those yet. And then if you can just respond to them, then we'll just post that on Facebook over the next couple of days. Yeah, do. And I can, I can, yeah, I can uh, get on the Facebook page and answer the questions. Okay. Awesome. That would be great. Hey, you guys. Yeah. So this always is recorded uh, because Facebook saves it. So that's a good thing. And, um, you know, if you feel like this is going to be helpful for someone who has been struggling with detection, lumps, fibrocystic breast, has history of breast cancer, family history of breast cancer, do tag them in the video below. And, um, I think it's going to be super helpful. I've posted Dr. Veronique's website. I posted a place so you can get the model. I've got the, I've got the booby here right now with me. Um, feels really nice to touch it actually. <laughs> my dog, I, you know, I was preparing for this call with you and my dog was just like plump. <laughs> Feel good. Feels good. Um, and, um, and then we're also going to, you mentioned also the thermography online, uh, thermologyonline.org. Yeah, I'll post that link as well. So you've got a whole bunch of resources you can go to. Thank you so much for being here with us today. This was really great. Um, and I love the education piece, you know, and that's like, I feel like this is really what empowers communities is to, is to be educated and share that knowledge. And most importantly, take action because knowing a lot of things is one thing, taking action is another thing altogether. We That's all know right. those people who, you know, I have, I have a neighbor a few doors down, you know, and, and every time I see her, he's like, I know about this, I should be doing that. And I'm like, well, you know, cause I just came back from Switzerland and I was there, we're doing this liver detox and say, like, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And, and, and I'm like, well, what do what it? are you doing? Right. <laughs> But that's, you know, that's, um, we just have to just sit down and do it, right? Yeah. Awesome. So great to have you here. And um, I'm sure thank I'll you see so you much. soon. Yeah, thank you. Hey, everybody, I will see you on Friday. We've got a great um, show for you coming up on Friday with the founder of Rasta Coffee. I'm going to be making a, a demo as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, I'll see you then. Bye, everybody. Bye.